So welcome. So this is video three in our series on in the season certs. Um, and in this video, we're going to have a little look at simplifying certs. So we're going to express certs in their simplest form and then addition, subtraction, multiplication and a bit of division with certs. Again, all this content is content straight from GCSE. So it should be something that you're familiar with. So let's have a little look. Right. First thing to note is that you now have calculators available for for the AS exams on the A level exams, um, but there will the examiners will find ways to be able to examine your your skills on simplifying thirds um, to get around this. So you still need to be able to do the manipulations and simplifying thirds, manipulating thirds will appear in other contexts as well. So it's important still to maintain those skills. And as I said before, this is pretty much uh, GCSE plus a little bit. So. There's four examples that we're going to have to deal with. The first one, example A, is just a straightforward simplifying series question. So can we take root 192 and write it in a simpler fashion? So what we're going to do is split that down into two factors of 192. There's any number of ways of doing this. I've chosen to go for root 2 times root 96. So just kind of, I know that 2 is going to go into 192 and that just makes them a bit smaller, makes the, uh, the factorizing a bit simpler as we go on. And then I'm going to take that and take that root 96 and root 96. Well, 96 is 6 times 16. So I'm going to write that as root 6, root 16. And the reason I've picked 16 there is because 16 is a square number. So the square root of 16 is simply 4. So that bit there has just got a value of 4. So the expression becomes 4 root 2 root 6. What we're going to do now is say, well, we can't simplify the root 2 any further. So we'll have a go at simplifying root 6. And we can break that down. That root 6 can become root 2, root 3. There it is. And now we can see that in the middle of that expression there, I've got 4 times root 2 times root 2 times root 3. Well, the root 2 times root 2 is just 2. I mean, that's the very def definition of a square root. Uh, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to be 2. So that middle bit there is just going to become 2. So now we've got 4 times 2 times root 3. We can't break down the square root part any further because 3 is a prime number. We've got no factors that will break down to. So we've ended up with just 8 root 3. Now, originally I started out by um, choosing 2 and 96 as factors. You could have chosen any of the factors. And if you do everything correctly, you'll still end up with the same answer, 8 root 3 at the end of it. In actual fact, we could have done that just in one step by choosing um 64 and 3 and that would have got us straight to the 8 root 3 in one step but i chose root 2 root 96 just to illustrate some of the manipulations that you can do within these calculations but whichever way you do it it's only ever going to be one answer and in this case that's going to be 8 root 3. now addition is a little bit more complex you can't just simply add together the numbers underneath the square roots what we've got to do is take each of those square roots and break them down, simplify them, and express them each in terms of the same root. And the one we're going to aim for here is root 7, because 7 is a factor of 112, it's a factor of 28, it's a factor of 63. So it's a question of kind of spotting which one is the, uh, the, the common factor across all three. And then let's say in this case, we're aiming for 7. So let's take the root 112, and let's break that down. So that's 16 times 7 is 112. So that bit is going to be 4 root 7. We've got 4 root 28. Well, root 28 is root 4 root 7. So I've got 4 root 4 root 7. And obviously the root 4 becomes 2. So that gives me 8 root 7. So the 8 there coming from 4 times 2. And then the last one is 2 root 63. And hopefully we can see that root 63 would be root 9 root 7. So 2 root 9 root 7. The root 9 being 3, so that gives me 6 root 7. So what we've done is just taken those three bits, dealt with them separately, broken them down all into terms of root 7, and now, because they're all in terms of the same thing, we can just kind of add them together or subtract as we want, in exactly the same way as if I wanted to do, for example, 4x plus 8x would be 12x. 4 root 7 plus 8 root 7, it's going to be 12 lots of root 7. So, here we go. Let's put it all together. So you can see I've got 4 root lots of root 7 plus here that's 12 root 7 and then I've got to take away the 2 root 63 which is this bit so I've got 12 take away the 6 so all in all I've got 6 root 7 there and there's my final answer 
onto example C, where we've got a division. And again, because that root 200, that 200 is underneath the square root, we can't just simply do a divide by 5. What we've got to try and do is extract something from the square root and then do the cancelling. And the easiest way to do that is to take the root 200 and break it down to being root 100, root 2. So there's still got 5 on the bottom. And clearly, square root of 100 is 10. So then, now that we've got that 10 outside the square root, now we can just do the 10 divided by 5. And so, and our last example, we've got some multiplying out of the bracket. So it's a square bracket. So I'd always recommend writing it out in full just to make sure you don't forget about those middle terms. And we'll start doing the multiplying out. So to begin with, we've got root 15 times root 15, which is just 15. And we've got root 15 times by root 3. Now that is going to become 3 root 5 because the root 15 there is is root 5 root 3. The 2 root 3s multiply and to give me that 3 there. We've got the middle term, that's going to be another 3 root 5. And then finally, we've got root 3 times root 3 on the end, which is just 3. And all that remains to be done now is just to tidy up the whole number terms and the square root terms. So I've ended up with 18 plus 6 lots of root 5. And finally, we're going to put our search work into a little problem solving question, putting it into the, the context of uh, uh, solving the area of a trapezium. So we're told that the trapezium has got an area of 10 root 6 centimetres squared. We're given some of the other dimensions, and we've got to find the length of the bottom side, AD, uh, which is currently, being, we're told, is K. And we've got to write it in a particular form, and that form there is A root B minus C. So we've just got numbers there that will replace the A, B, and C. And we'll see how this is going to pan out in a second. So we're going to start off. You expect to know that the area of a trapezium is half A plus B times H, where A and B are the opposite parallel size, and H is the distance between them. So all we're going to do now is take that formula and put in the values that we've got. So we know the area is 10 root 6. We know the opposite sides, A and B, are there, K and 3. And we know that H is 4 root 3. So if we just plug all of that in, we've got an equation now in terms of k, which we just need to tidy up a little bit. And the first obvious thing to do is to take the half there, times it by the 4, and that just deals with the fraction. So I've now got 10 root 6 equals k plus 3 brackets uh, times by 2 root 3. I've got to make this say k equals, so I'm going to move the 2 root 3 over to the other side and I do it as a divide. So this is the division part of our thirds work. So I've got 10 root 6 divided by 2 root 3. And in this example, because I've got the root 6 and the root 3, both of these are thirds, so I can just say, well, root 6 divided by root 3 is root 2. And if you wanted to prove that for yourself, you just break that down into root 6 being root 2, root 3, and you'll see the root 3s cancel. However, you prefer to think about it. Um, so we've got 10 divided by 2 is 5, root 6 divided by 3 is root 2. So we've got 5 root 2 equals k plus 3. And then final piece of rearranging to get our results, k equals 5 root 2 minus 3. And you can see clearly that that is in the same format as we were asked for up here, where a is worth 5, b is worth 2, and c is worth 3.